Car folk, like any other folk, need to take stock of their strengths as well as their weaknesses. Now, there is little debate amongst the strength of coveting things that may be considered old fashioned to some. However, there is more debate amongst the weaknesses. For example, some feel that us bitching and moaning incessantly when car manufacturers take away things that we covet, like station wagons with manual transmissions. However, the real weakness is that we don't do anything about it before the car manufacturer takes away the quaint, the old fashioned. However, there is an opportunity for us to right this wrong, turn this weakness into a strength. I can count on one hand how many cars are on offer today that are brand new with an NA V8, naturally aspirated V8. And one of them is entirely new. So yes, we are going to drive it today, but rather than bitch and moan, you know what to do. Serious question, being you and I have already driven the heavily updated IS350, what makes an IS500 an IS500? Well, there's sort of the glorious part. Remember the dearly departed GSF or the current RCF or the Santa Maria Madre de Dios LC500? All of those vehicles have one thing in common other than their manufacturer, and that would be a naturally aspirated 5-liter V8. I will let you take a guess what is shoehorned into one of Lexus' smallest cars here. In this application, 472 horsepower, 395 pound-feet of torque, and there's another spot of glorious news. This is only on offer as rear drive. Now, you and I, we already did a tech review on this car where I covered some more mechanical details. Go check that episode out. But something germane to the driving experience here, yes, there's different throttle mapping, transmission mapping, dampers, and steering. But specifically with the steering here, the weight changes a bit, but not enough, kind of like we experienced in the RCF Fuji Track Edition. Then let's kind of downshift into something that, let's call this pedestrian. I know really you don't want to discuss fuel economy with a naturally aspirated V8, but let's do it anyway. 16, 24, 19 combined in my short time with this car. I'm doing nothing close to that. So let's press on to performance figures. Zero to 64.4 seconds and VMAX 150 miles an hour. Before you and I motivate our favorite Lexus engine, a friendly reminder, some help with the algorithm. That is clicking like, subscribe, notifications. Yes, leaving a comment, but most importantly, sharing this with your friends on all your socials. Uh, with that, this is not exactly a heavy car, it's not a light car, 3,891 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,765 kilograms. Now, in relation to the six-cylinder IS we drove, what, nine, ten months ago, that's 143 pounds more. I'm assuming that's all in the nose. And then, as it relates to, say, that M3 competition we had on this same road, one pound more. With that, Sport Plus mode. Oh, yes! I love me an NAV8. We already knew this was gonna be good. How many times have we driven this engine before and love it? Granted, I prefer it in the LC carrying case, but here, a smaller, lighter car, it just works so well, especially pulling out of things like that. The transmission is a bit of a different scenario. Yes, it's an eight-speed torque converter. It works. It's the kind of transmission you really don't want to use the paddle shifts for because you do get a lot of denied shifts and frankly, it's not as rewarding as a dual clutch we've experienced in many other like German manufacturers. Here, I'd love to see the use of a dual clutch. I know that Toyota Lexus, they don't really do it. God, man, that traction control system, it really intervenes on a road like this. I guess it's saying this is still a Lexus and it wants to go to Del Boca Vista, but this really with an eight cylinder, should it? I don't think so. Uh, anyway, back to the transmission. It works. It's just not as sharp as some of the dual clutch units that we've experienced. And I think it's kind of robbing this car. Like remember, I know this is not a direct comparison, but remember the Corvette, that's an NA V8 with a dual clutch. And that thing was otherworldly. Not exactly a high-tech V8, kind of like this, but it does have a good amount of power, almost identical, but there, that power is more usable because of the dual-clutch transmission. I think this car is being let down a bit 
by not having a better or more higher tech transmission, perhaps we can change that. Now in fairness, I will say, is it as sharp, is it as fast, is it as explosive as say that M3 competition? No, it's not that kind of a car because it's a different technology. And really this is not so much about being as fast as that car, this is a completely different personality. This is about a different character of vehicle. So it's not really a direct competition. The only thing that these things have in common is the overall equation of a high horsepower four-door car. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the absence game with today's contestant, not a Porsche. You're probably wondering why the hell am I sitting in the front of a Porsche in the middle of a Lexus episode. You see, the car that we are driving today, uh, we got this car so early the folks at Toyota Corporate, they were still working with their abacus on the pricing of the vehicle. But I gotta give you advice here. You guys, you bitched and moaned like I've never seen before about pricing about this specific car in the comments below. Now I send these episodes to the folks at the manufacturers and some of them read them, some of them don't read your comments. But in this case, clearly the pricing folks have read your comments. Because remember, we put this against the BMW M3, which has a base price of 73 grand. You guys said, no way on God's green earth would I pay near that much. It must be cheaper. Well, Toyota product planners have been listening to you. Uh, you see, the base price of the IS500, the base model, 65 grand, that's what I thought. 60 grand? No. $56,500. $56,500. Now for the avoidance of doubt, there are only two trim levels. There's no options. So like the sunroof comes fitted as standard. The memory package is fitted as standard. The park assist, that's fitted as standard. However, there's a premium package that adds things like the navigation, Mark Levinson sound, triple beam headlights, the rear sunshade. That one, 65 grand? No, $61,000. Now there is that launch edition. That one's got the incognito paint job. It's got the BBS wheels, which look much better. The ultra suede seats. And it is the limited edition, it has the plaque. That one is closer to the BMW, but still not that close. $67,400. Now two things I'm gonna say here. Number one, in my 12 years of doing this, I have never, ever, ever, ever seen a car manufacturer come that far below our price estimates, which means number two, get off your ass and go buy one of these. Because if you don't buy them, they go away. And I don't want cars like this with naturally aspirated V8s to go away. So there's no reason not to buy one of these. Get it? Now back to driving. Okay, so in order for us to discuss driving dynamics, we need to push this thing a bit more aggressively. So let's tempt fate and switch off the traction control and the stability control, which I just did because it was very intrusive back when we were trying to discuss uh, pushing power in this thing. Uh, here, a couple things going on. Let's first remind ourselves of what's underneath this vehicle. It's very similar to what we experienced in the V6 version of this car we drove about nine, 10 months ago. That would be double wishbones up front with a stabilizer bar, then multi-link in the back, also with a stabilizer bar. Now, something interesting. This does feel like the IS we've already driven, just with more power. However, as we learned in the tech review, there is an additional piece that is added to this that is not on the basic car, and it's a laterally mounted damper. Now, yeah, there are adjustable dampers, but this is an additional damper, if I'm reading this correctly, that is supplied by Yamaha. You know, Yamaha, the piano company, motorcycle company. Uh, they provided this thing, and it's supposed to do two things. It's like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of thing. At low speeds around town, it's supposed to make the ride quality more compliant. So make it drive like a Lexus. Granted, a stiffer Lexus, but like a Lexus which it does. You definitely feel like it's an IS, like any other when you're not pushing it aggressively around town. However, in situations like this, it's supposed to improve the composure of the vehicle. And I'm thinking by the way it's mounted, it's working on the side to side. 
the pitch of the vehicle. And here I can say it does a good job of controlling the pitch. It's just not quite to that sharpness that we experienced in the M3 competition, or really other German cars as well. This is, I think by design, trying to be just a bit more, a bit more like a Lexus. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's not trying to be one of those cars. So for the avoidance of doubt, this is a hell of a machine on these roads. It is very rewarding to push it aggressively here, but it's not to punishing levels of sharpness, which the M3 competition is. Now, is that a bad thing? No, I really like the way that M3 competition works. So I do feel compelled to interject something a bit inside baseball with this specific episode. Uh, this is one of the very few cars where I have come out to this road and felt it necessary to switch off the traction and stability controls. I would not suggest doing that for most folks because it does take significant driver skill to push an almost 4,000 pound car with a rear wheel drive V8 propulsion system in it. Uh, this could go very bad for you if you haven't had training. And here's why that is, it is significant significantly more rewarding to drive this thing out fresco as opposed to techno and I would go so far as to saying it's because of the equation of this vehicle meaning it's a V8 rear drive kind of old school hot rod that is wedded with Lexus engineering meaning they're erring on the side of caution in terms of designing in the limits of adhesion and what the traction control will let you do. So they give you the opportunity to switch it off and it does make it a completely different personality and character of this car, but your abilities kind of have to support it. This is good, different, but very good. And surprisingly, it's not just because there is a naturally aspirated V8 underneath the hood. Rather, it's the whole package and how it came together. What's the old saying about more than the sum of its parts. However, this is where I need to kind of educate you folks on this in the global world. It really isn't an M3 competitor. Rather, it is a more mellow M3, which brings us to the wish list. And here, we already added some things in the tech review about color and trim. So let's add some additional items that are more substantive. And the first, and think of this on like a lower end of the spectrum, needs more weight in the steering. Second, and this is like very high on the spectrum, and I know this is a huge ask, I believe there is blue sky for a GT3 version of this. It must be naturally aspirated. Hopefully I have not been unclear, but I'm thinking like 600 horsepower, much stiffer suspension, much more weight to the steering, and yet yeah, it could take the place at least in the price point of where the GSF used to be. Cause I gotta believe, yeah, car folks like you and I, we bitch and moan when things go away. But when there's something special as proven by like Audi with the RS6 Avant and Mercedes with the E63S, we like clamor for those kind of opportunities to be able to write a check for something rare and something incredibly special. And I'm thinking a naturally aspirated GT3 version of this, keeping it light and 600 horsepower, hopefully I already mentioned that, I think that would work. And this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All In Word, Moto Man TV All In Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I would once again like to humbly request your help with the algorithm, which translates to clicking like, subscribe, notifications, and most importantly, sharing these episodes with your friends on all your socials. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.